Well, good morning, church family. This is our first lesson in 2022 autumn season. Uh, funny, it sure doesn't feel much like fall. I guess the last couple of days it might have cooled off a little bit. But uh, uh, my okra and my peppers are still bearing, and I, I might even have a few more tomatoes trying to get right. Soon enough, though, we'll see some leaves begin to change, and some of us will be complaining about the cold. And that's just the way we are, hey? Anyway, with that in mind, turn your Bibles to James chapter 3, where we're going to take, a, take on another of those topics most of us would rather James had left out, frankly. But before we begin to self-examine, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, thank you for life and health and all the good things that you give to us for the ability to, to, to reason with, with your word and listen to what your word has to say to us. Help open our minds and, and our hearts to what your word has to say. And Father, help us to, uh, to, to really get what, what you're telling us you, you expect from us through this lesson today. Lord, we love you so much, and we're so grateful for your, for your presence in our life and the power that, that you bring into our lives. And I pray that today as we, uh, as we meditate on your word, that you will, if, if there's room for improvement, and there always is, Father, I pray that you'll show us where we, need to, where we need to lean into you and listen to what you have to say. Thank you again for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I've referred to, to James in quite a bit, you know, as, uh, as the half-brother of Jesus. And uh, in, fra in fact, he only came to Jesus kind of as a last resort uh, when he met, when Jesus came to see him uh, after the resurrection. Uh, he, he, he became the pastor of the Church of Jerusalem, which made him to be a pretty powerful guy. And uh, he, uh, he was kind of a hard-nosed dude, as far as I can tell from everything I've read about him. Uh, but he was also, uh, one of his nicknames uh, pretty early on became, uh, it became a nickname for him. They called him Old Camel Knees, Old Camel Knees, because he spent so much of his time in prayer on his knees. Uh, his reflections on the life of a committed Christian, uh, as spoken by the Holy Spirit, to me, it's really why I consider the book of James kind of like a New Testament book of Proverbs for us. Rules of the road, if you will. Uh, so with that notion about James' attitude about the normal Christian life moving in our hearts and our, our minds, let's begin today's lesson in James chapter 3. <clears throat> We're going to look at verses 1 through 5a, the middle of, that's where it actually breaks naturally in Scripture, where he says, My brethren... Let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment, for we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, all, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they, all, they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder whenever the, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. So this ver first verse is one that always causes me to swallow kind of hard and, 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 and really beg God to help me say only those things that he wants me to say. This verse exposes us to, I think, God's expressed desire for us to, uh, to be sure we know what we're talking about when we talk about spiritual things. From time to time, in my, when I teach, I'll, I will actually tell you outright, it's, in, it's my opinion, or I have a theory, if you will. And, uh, I, and hopefully when I do that, you can, you can know, even though I really believe what I'm saying is the truth, you need to check it out. You, but in fact, you need to check out uh, whoever and whenever someone teaches to make sure that the, the scripture is saying exactly what they're teaching. Uh, while I will be judged to a higher standard, the, uh, there, that, in, that in no way uh, gives you a free pass to just believe what I have to say. As believers, we as believers, we, we have at our fingertips so many resources 
uh, amazing uh, scriptural resources. I've told you about the Blue Letter Bible app that I like to use. There are so many other things that are available uh, on uh, if you look them up on the inter internet, if you will. But all those things are, are awesome. But we also need to just to look at scripture to make sure that, uh, that, that, that we understand what his word says and that when somebody, someone teaches us uh, that they're using, they're using truth. Uh, there are things that are not that clear and it might need some, uh, some illustration or some explanation uh, in today's language and in today's context, if you will. But our, explana our explanations must never contradict what God has spoken to us in his word. Uh, James then goes on to uh, illustrate what this looks like. In verse two, he begins to drill down on the, on the very important idea that, that Christians must control their tongues. That's the whole next past part of the scripture is about that. In verse three, he uses the illustration of a horse being controlled by the rider, <clears throat> the master, if you will. Uh, by having the master put a bridle with a bit on it in the horse's mouth. Now, I used to have horses, so I, I can speak with some knowledge here. Uh, bridles and bits, the bits that is the part that goes in the horse's mouth, they come in kind of a wide range of designs. And it really depends on what your, uh, I guess the disposition of the horse, what that bit needs to look like. Uh, some are more, how, how shall I say this? They were more, uh, they're a little more painful on the horse's tongue. And that's really what the bridle does. It presses on the horse's tongue to get its attention, if you will. Uh, so uh, because there are so many different designs, what a good, uh, a good horseman will do is choose the bridle and bit that's, that, that matches what that horse's behavior is like at the time. And as the horse gets used to his master, uh, the reality is after a while, they don't even need a bit. Uh, a, a good horseman will train his horse to, to lead pretty easily. Uh, by, we call it neck reining, but they don't even use that bit on the tongue unless, unless there's uh, some reason to really pull it to a stop and that gets the horse's attention. Anyway, that, that bit is the, is the illustration that, uh, that James uses. And I believe we should, we should be, I should be desiring to work with my master in such a way that his bridle can become ever more gentle uh, as, as I follow him, as we follow him. James then changes tunes a little bit and it, he, he likens the tongue to a ship's rudder. And it is kind of interesting, awesome, really, that a, a ship can be turned with such a small part of it in the water, called that part that's called a rudder. It, 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 it's, it's an amazing thing, but, but we need to understand something. When we're talking about this tongue thing, we're, we're generally, I don't think, we're talking about coarse talk or profane talk or vulgar, vulgar, vulgar talk. I think, yes, that's certainly a, a part of it, but what I think he's really talking about is our struggle with, with uh, what I'll call critical and, or negative words, particularly about others and about ourselves. Uh, these are the words that can really damage our relationships with others. Uh, how, how often have I had to say, well, I really didn't mean that, that way, you know, we, we try to laugh it off, but sometimes when we say things, we can, we can do some profound hurt. Those unguarded words can have a lasting, maybe even eternal uh, effect on the souls and psych psyche or psychological aspect of, of those who receive them. We, we've heard stories, many stories about children who've been, <clears throat> who've been marked by parents who say that their children are stupid or, uh, or ugly, or you know, you, you fill in the words that are, are damaging, and some of you may be may have come from that. Uh, I have seen people crippled by unthinking words, and it's 
and I think these are the primary focus of what James was writing about. Critical negative words are poisonous to others. Uh, boastful, prideful words are poisonous to ourselves. And I, I kind of like, uh, I, I like to approach this with a positive thought, if you would, that came from Jesus uh, when he was talking in, Jane, in, I'm sorry, in John chapter 7, verses 37 to 38. He says, on the last day, <clears throat> that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. You, know, you see, our hearts are a reservoir. Uh, if our hearts are full of Jesus, uh, then good things come forth. If they're not full of Jesus, uh, it's not a good thing. But they should be full of Jesus so that we could have liver or rivers of living water and livers too of living water. J Jesus had more to say about what, what comes from our mouths. He, he said something in Matthew 15, 16 to 19 that says this, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Jesus was, uh, <laughs> he was sparring with the Pharisees who were trying to, uh, trying to fuss at him about the disciples eating with un, without washing their hands or not, or eating unclean things, something like that. But Jesus is saying, what we say, what we say is both important and is, is observed. It's heard by others and, and by God, by our, by our Lord. And what we say is important. What we, and, and James is saying that throughout this, our tongue, what we say is important. So guard your, guard your heart so that what comes out is profitable, if you will. Well, let's move on. Uh, we'll, we're going to see another illustration in uh, James 3, verses 5, the middle of 5 and on 8. See how great a forest a little fire kindles, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird or of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no one can tame the tongue. It is an unruly, unruly evil full of deadly poison. Uh, where I used to live in Illinois, uh, we often passed a Smokey the Bear sign that would tell us what the, he'd have his uh, shovel pointing at a certain fire danger because of the moisture levels and stuff, how dry it was. Uh, but there was also a sign usually right beside it that would talk about the dangers of a smoldering, smoldering cigarette and just how one of those little tiny cigarette butts could destroy a whole forest. In James' illustration, instead of a cigarette, he was saying that one unruly tongue could destroy a whole church. That, that's what the, he referenced when, in verse 8 when he said, uh, I'm sorry, when, when he referenced the body before verse 8. But to go back to my illustration, uh, it, it, it says, but no man can t tame the tongue. Think about that illustration of the horse a minute. Uh, it's, it's, it, it, it's, the horse is being controlled by the master's touch through that bridle, that bit in the bridle. And, and for me to, uh, have my tongue controlled, I can only do that when I, on a regular basis, well, first of all, I have to surrender my life to him. And then on a regular basis, not just once and done, on a regular basis, I have to surrender my heart and my mouth to Jesus. Uh, my mind, particularly, my mind and my mouth, I have to surrender those to him. And, and really, that 
it's when it says no man can tame the tongue, it's not to, to make us uh, discouraged. He's just saying you can't do it, but the Holy Spirit can. Uh, in fact, he's the only one who can. So again, I have to surrender to his will for my life as you have to surrender your life to him as well. Well, let's move on on how James describes hypocrisy. Let's read verses uh, 9 and 10 in chapter 3. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude, that's a big word, means image of God, the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. Then James says, my brethren, these things ought not to be. James is exasperated, the Holy Spirit is exasperated, that he has seen and heard folks praising God on Sunday at church and then turn around on, through the rest of the week cursing their brothers. These things ought not to be. Don't be like that, he says. He said, and he says that to the believers. He, I mean, we can all be guilty of it. We just, we need to guard us, guard it so we don't. Then he uses some illustrations to show how wrong that behavior is. And he moves on in James 3, 11 to 12. Does a spring send forth both fresh water and poison or bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear, bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. He's simply saying this. Our lives should reflect our ownership. Let me say it again. My life, our lives should reflect our ownership, our, our allegiance to the Heavenly Father. We should be consistent in our walk and our talk. <sighs> Critical negative thinking is a, is a, mm, it's a bad thing. And, and James is, he, he spends a good bit of time on it here. Moving on in verses 13 to 18 in chapter 3, he says, Who is wise? and understanding among you. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have any, if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion, and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, willing to give, give way to someone else, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. This particular passage warns against pride and, and envy. And those are two of the most, they're really two of the most difficult sins of disposition that we might have, that we have to fight. The, the characteristics of godly wisdom and, and, and peace seeking should be, that should become our focus for daily life. When we begin to have thoughts, and that's, that's where it begins in our thoughts, when we have, begin to have thoughts that are negative or critical, uh, or if we begin to have thoughts of envy, things that we, we, you know, we don't, anyway, the envy is just wanting something that somebody else has. We should, we should be immediately ask for forgiveness because those thoughts, when they lead to that envy, that's, that's, that's pretty serious. We should ask for forgiveness and ask him to, to, to move us around that, away from that so that we can be the kind of people he wants us to be. And we need to ask for, for that before we actually say something that, is, uh, that, that's, that kind of just pops up in our hearts and minds. And when we do that on a regular basis, uh, there's, there's kind of a peculiar thing that happens. Those thoughts begin to be less frequent and uh, since nature and our minds abhors a vacuum, what we should really do is cultivate positive thoughts about other people, especially in ourselves. Uh, not, not boastful thoughts, but uh, 
just remember that you're in God's hands and he, he loves you and, and, and he wants the best for you. That's the kind of positive thought we need to be running through our head rather than, oh, woe is me. I, I don't amount to anything. I'm, I'm worthless. I'm, blah, blah, blah. No, those things are bad. So anyway, we, we, we should fill our hearts with positives rather than, and, I'm, and I don't mean this, this televangelist positive thinking stuff. I'm just talking about what God, what, what God should mean to me and you. And we should, be, we should be filling our thoughts with what's in here rather than what's around us and what's, what's leading us to think bad thoughts. Anyway, junk. We should keep our minds off the junk. That's the, that's the simple answer to it. It's simple, but it's hard. The Holy Spirit, through James, is urging Christians to cultivate wholesome, hopeful, helpful, encouraging thoughts and speech. And the crowd he was addressing, how, we need to remember this. These folks had gone through some bad stuff, bad times. They had been scattered because of persecution. They had a what they thought would be a right to be a little negative, but James didn't. He said that's not an excuse for being negative. It's not an excuse for being ugly in our speaking. Our circumstances should not make us become less Christian than we should be. You see, there's always going to come a, come to mind some excuse or some justification for or how we are, how we are, are thinking, if you will, our stinking thinking. Just remember where those thoughts come from. And James tells us that. He says, this wisdom, and he, I'll put air quotes around this, with this wisdom does not descend from above, doesn't come from God, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Ooh, that's, that's pretty strong. But he, then he turns around and he says, while godly thinking that is wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Man, that's where we need to go. That's where I need to go on a daily basis. So ask God to, to help you surrender your mind. Help him, ask him to help you turn your, your mouth over to him on a daily basis because it's not, again, a one and done thing. You have to do this all the time because there's always something that comes up that causes us to, to, to go to our nature, our natural nature, and it's not, not a pretty thing. I wanna be where he says wisdom that is from above is pure, etc. I just think that's a marvelous place to be. Well, next week we're going to move on and move along in James chapter 4 where we're going to be looking at how we can stand triumphantly in Christ during hard times. So let's pray. Lord, thank you. We, should, we need you to guide our thoughts and our minds and our mouths in this world that we live in. We, we struggle with uh, emotions and we struggle with feelings and we struggle with uh, the desire to get even sometime, all the, all the things that, that would lead us away from you. I pray that you will, you will help us to get back on track whenever we start to falter. You'll remind us that we, we have a higher birth, birthright than, than the common man. And we, you've called us into a life that is, is excellent, a, a life that is, uh, uh, that is to be pleasing to the, to the, creator of our soul. Pray, Lord, now that you will bless our time of worship that's coming up. I pray that you'll bless our, our pastors. We'll bless all of our staff, Father, that you will watch over them and bless them in a mighty way. You'll be with our, all the service, that every part of it will, will be certainly in your hands. And we trust you to just to bring us to a state of worship that would bring a smile to your face. Father, for all the needs that uh, our church is facing right now, the loss. We've had so many, uh, so many losses, and I pray that you will be with those families that are experiencing grief and uh, need, need, they need a touch from you right now. Watch over them and bless them real good today. Father, thank you for loving us. 
when we aren't lovable. Thank you for your promises. Help us, Father, to not just claim them, but to seek them and use them, not to our benefit, but to yours. We love you, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to do today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, next, uh, again, be, uh, we're going to be in James chapter 4 next week. Uh, be sure to subscribe, like, and share. And if you have any questions or, or concerns about the Sunday school lesson or, or anything at all, if you need somebody to talk to you, please call us at 843-236-2224. When, when, if, if, if nobody's there, leave a, leave a message and somebody will get back to you. See you next week. Have a blessed day.